Hey guys, it's Carl, welcome back to another one. And for the first time in two years, I can finally say that I'm heading back to Europe, back to uh, MWC. I know the past a couple of years have been wonky, obviously with COVID and everything, but uh, this is the first international trip I am taking. So I thought there would be no better way than to do a tech travel pack video as I used to do them literally all the time uh, before this entire pandemic. So uh, yeah, all of this tech that we're about to check out, I'm taking with me to MWC, to Barcelona. We'll start off with a pack first. I think that's how uh, I used to start things off all the time. And I can actually say I've changed my pack for the first time in close to five to six years. This is a DB journey pack. And for anyone that's watched the channel for the past couple of years, you probably know that I swear by RSF or Peak Design. I am trying something new. I'm joining the DB family, which is kind of cool because before this used to be called Douchebags. And I used to watch a ton of Jan Olsen. He used to be um, one of my biggest inspos. I used to watch his YouTube channel all the time. I know that he still creates his vlogs, but he creates some uh, epic stuff. And he actually lives, uh, or kind of half lives close by in Monaco, which I'm actually heading back to uh, my parents' place, which is really close by. So I used to follow his stuff all the time and uh, finally full circle coming around. It's cool to show that, uh, yeah, I'm making the progression and not just because I'm a super fanboy, DB stuff, is really the next level in quality. So compared to say that RSF pack, which is usually made out of a ballistic nylon, this has a lot of this, um, I wanna say faux leather around the outside. And that kind of does two things. It gives it a bit more of a premium feel. And because I'm pretty rough with my packs, uh, I travel with them, I don't keep them in pristine condition. I throw them into luggage compartments. They pick up a ton of dirt, a ton of uh, scuffs on them. So this will just help keep it clean. And this colorway, which is a department from my typical black on black is raspberry. So I'm looking forward to it. This is their smallest day pack, but it can still carry most of the essentials. It can still fit a 15 inch laptop, which we'll get to in a second. Of course, all my camera gear will go inside. And just for my initial testing, carrying stuff from say home to the studio, it's been great. It does carry a higher price tag, but hence the better quality materials. And I think this should definitely last a bit longer. I have a couple pieces from DB now, and they all are great. They all kind of fit my lifestyle and have different functions. So I've got a large duffel. I've actually got one for my ski slash snow Board. Hope to shred out to the hills at least one more time by the end of the year, but for my pack to MWC and to Europe, this will be the one. And just as a little reference laptop of choice, which will be the Huawei MateBook 14S, it slots right into the back a ton of space. So looking forward to that. I'm guessing we can go on to the laptop, like I mentioned. So the 14S, I do like to test out a lot of tech when I travel. I think it's the perfect way to get to know something because you're stuck kind of using it. So this is Huawei's latest Ultrabook. Like I mentioned, 14 inch form factor, just took this out of the box, just set this up. The display is 2.5K touch sensitive and it is in a three by two aspect ratio, which I think is better for productivity. Just browsing the net, doing your normal day to day stuff. It gets up to 400 nits of brightness and it has a 90 Hertz adaptive refresh rate. And the thing that I love about Huawei Ultrabooks or notebooks, the form factor, I think they nail as well as the build quality. It feels premium, of course, aluminum, I'll say this is a gunmetal finish around the entire shell. It's got an improved cooling system on the back and they do have some really decent built-in speakers. But the one thing that I do love about this device or I guess Huawei notebooks in general, the keypad is just so good. There is a lot of travel on the keys and when you are being productive, when I travel, the biggest thing that I do is uh, typing out emails sadly for a couple hours a day, corresponding with brands, having a good keyboard makes the biggest difference. And I find that most PC laptops just don't have that. It's also got a decent trackpad size with no really wasted space around it. It is rocking the latest Intel Core i7 with Intel Iris Xe graphics, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. So we'll test this out more in depth through my trip and uh, my full dedicated review will come after uh, yeah, almost two weeks in Europe. So I will keep you guys posted, but that is the laptop of choice. Phone wise, I think I've kind of tweeted this and revealed it over on social. The reason why I'm heading down to MWC is to actually do a live tour of the Oppo booth. So this is the Oppo Find X5 Pro, Oppo's latest flagship. I did a full separate unboxing, which I'll leave linked up somewhere this way. I can never remember which side, but in 15 seconds, this latest flagship does have Oppo's in-house built silicon, the NPU Mary Silicon X, also did a ton of nighttime photography, and I'll also be doing a full photography tour while I'm there. So stay posted. My initial testing results have been pretty decent 
and this phone is on par with the iPhone 13 Pro as well as the S22 Ultra. So I do think Oppo is doing a really good job and if you wanna stay tuned to my live stream booth tour, I will leave a link down below and I know that there will be a ton of giveaways if you tune in. So if you want to win free stuff, that is always a, a good thing to do. This phone is actually kind of sitting on top of this notebook, which I will kind of plug shamelessly. I always bring some sort of stationery with me. I do find writing down notes, uh, just writing down things in general on paper with a pen, of course, just kind of helps me detach from tech, which is something that I probably need because uh, I am connected 24 seven. This notebook actually was sent to me from PlayStation with their new color console covers. So I got the cosmic red as well as the starlight blue controller. So thanks to PlayStation, you will be coming with me over to Europe. Another piece of tech that uh, I do like to test is smartwatches. And this one is kind of cool. So I'm removing my OG watch right now. A lot of you know my kind of love for hate relationship with smartwatches because uh, I'm technically labeled as a techie. I should have an Apple watch. I should have some sort of smartwatch. I swear by traditional watches, mostly because of aesthetics. I think that they just look better. I hate the idea of having a blank little slate on your wrist half the time. And that's where this smartwatch from Withings kind of perfectly fits in. So it looks like a traditional smartwatch. It's got the circular form factor. It has the standard date, time, all of the hand signals that you associate with a traditional watch. With this latest watch from Withings, you can essentially scan all of your key health metrics. So if we actually go through them, we've got steps. You can actually track altitude. So we're at 74 meters right now. How many floors you've gone up, ECG, SPO2, and even selecting your own workout and even its own little breathe functionality. So a lot of the key metrics that say an Apple Watch can track, this can do. Obviously you can't connect say your text messages or your iMessage to this, but if you just want something that's a bit more traditional with some of the key health benefits, which I think is the perfect way to go. And in my opinion, it just looks so much better than most smartwatches. It's just clean, it's minimal, and really reminds me of a traditional watch fan. So if you are that kind of person who's kind of torn, wants to go into the digital watch space, but uh, maybe you don't need as many features as a Garmin, as say an Apple Watch, and you still want something to look a little bit classy, looks good on your wrist, Withings, I think kind of fits that bill and kind of nails that right in between. Moving on to some other key essentials, and because we're recording with the two separate cams right now, so A cam and B cam, I'm probably gonna bring my B cam as it's not in the cage. So we are recording with the Sony A7S III. That will be my main camera to record, I guess, most of the video footage that we shoot, the occasional photo should be fine. I think a lot of you know that, but the lens that I am taking, if you can only travel with one, I've grown to love this a lot in the studio. It isn't even the fastest lens that I have. It's just the most versatile. This is the Sony. It's still a G Master F4, 24 to 105. So it's got such a long zoom range that goes all the way from 24 mils to of course that 105. And that's a lot further than say my 24 to 70. Even the 16 to 35, which I get is the ultra wide, which is great for vlogging, which I don't, think I'm gonna do. I don't think I'm gonna vlog my trip. Maybe I will. Let me know if uh, you wanna see that. If uh, you don't need that little front facing shot and all you need is mostly product shots, landscape, um, pretty much everything else in between, even some up close shots, some portrait shots, you can't beat this. It's really tough to beat that versatility of this focal range. I know that you don't get the creaminess of the F2.8, all that extra bokeh, but in reality, it's not too big of a difference as we are still shooting on full frame. And the best part, I think, if you do shoot a lot of video, this does have optical steady shot built in. So it keeps most of your shots jitter free, way better than what uh, the actual camera can do, even with in-body image stabilization. It's smaller and lighter than the other G Master F2.8 lenses. Um, and I've just kind of grown to love this little guy. So this is great. Maybe if I vlog, I might bring say my baddest 18 mil, but uh, like I said, if you guys want me to vlog, let me know. Also haven't done a full travel vlog in two years, so I might be a tad bit rusty. For the camera accessories, I just kind of want to talk about these quickly because we are doing a booth tour. 
I don't really know the situation of lighting in most events. Like uh, say I go to CES, that's typically uh, the lighting isn't the greatest. So I always bring this little aperture MC light with me. I usually just mount this to the top of my camera with this little hot shoe connector. And with this, you can actually control how bright or how dim it gets all the way from zero to, um, you know, 100%. And you can actually control the color temperature because it's by color LED. So right now we have it on 5700. And if you want, you can uh, go a bit more yellowish, a bit warmer. So all the way from 5,700 to 3,200. So cool little nifty light and it is nice and small and it does charge via USB-C, which is nice. And uh, if we are doing any day photography stuff, kind of going around town, this little peak design strap, which I've had for also five to six years, it's great. It's got a little quick release plate. Once again, I'll get some extra B-roll once we're done filming with that B-cam to show you guys how simple it is. But uh, this is great if you just want to keep your camera out of your hands and just strapped around your neck if you don't want to have it in your backpack. Last two accessories that we'll kind of take with me to kind of round up the pack. This needs no introduction. The Logitech MX Master 3 will be accompanying me with my Huawei laptop. When I make all of my video edits, I kind of swear by using an actual mouse. You can see how yellowish and how dated this mouse is because I swear by it, it's featured on the channel and will continue to do so until the MX Master 4 comes. And last but not least, a new pair of earbuds. Once again, testing out some new stuff when I travel. These are the Sony link buds. And what's really cool about these, Sony has developed these with, I guess, built-in transparency mode in mind. These actually have built-in little cutlets or cutouts for ambient sound to get into your ear. So typically most earbuds with active noise canceling have microphones on the outside to allow that ambient noise inside. These will just allow the regular sound that comes through these little holes so you can listen to your surroundings. A lot of people actually have one earbud in, one earbud out, so they can still listen to music. They can still um, stay tuned to their content, but still listen to normal conversations that people have. I still think it's a bit of a weird look, but a lot of younger people, a lot of people that watch this YouTube channel, for example, have earbuds in one ear, and I think Sony is trying to capitalize on that market. Obviously, it's great if you're using this, if you're, say, at work, you still wanna tune in to your coworkers, but still have something in your ear. I'm still kind of getting used to them, but I totally get the direction that Sony is going with these. The use cases make a lot of sense, and as tech becomes more integral and more part of our daily routine, they're always connected to us. I'm looking at a smartwatch, our smartphone, and of course now our headphones phones will just always be on us. And a dope little thing, Sony did send an extra pair out. Another cool thing, this entire packaging was plastic free. This is the black pair. Of course, the white pair, I will keep this inside of the box because um, I'll be giving one away and you don't want my nasty earwax on your earbuds. So just make sure you're subbed. Leave those comments down below. Um, wish me luck in Barcelona. Hopefully I do not get trapped in Europe and uh, can make it back home in one piece. Hope you guys enjoyed this vid and hope you enjoyed my first actual tech travel pack in over two years. We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.